Every now and again, I stumble on an offer that's too good to pass up, and what I'm demoing today falls into that category. Viva Decor's Precious Metal Color, which has been discontinued by the U.S. distributor. The deal I got was so good that we're passing it along and are offering Precious Metal Color at 50% off while supplies last. In today's video, I'll demo a couple of ways that you can use these fabulous metallic paints. As I film this, we have 14 of the precious metal colors in varying amounts. Some we have a bunch of, some we have far less of, so my suggestion is that you grab what you like when you see it because I don't expect them to last. The discount is that good. There'll be links to the paint and all the other products down below. So these are water-based and fill with mica, which creates a really strong metallic look. They can be applied to pore surfaces like paper and chipboard, plus you can use them on glass and plastic. They are permanent when dry on a pore surface. Obviously, if you try to scrape it off of glass or plastic, I expect that you could scrape some of it off. You can apply precious metal paint, precious metal color, sorry, with a brush, a palette knife, an ink blending tool. Um, you can use your fingers because this is what happens some of the time. Uh, they work with stencils and foam stamps. Use them on a gel press plate. Pretty much anything that you do with paint, you can do with these paints. So uh, we all love stencils. Let's start with that first. I have two colors. I have violet and pink. Some of these seem to have mixing balls in them and some of them do not. So you're going to just expect that you have to shake the heck out of them to get all that color up off the bottom. They also are going to have a foil seal under the cap. Now I've already taken it off of the pink one, so I'll show you on the violet. I just use some really fine scissors like this. You could use tweezers. Whatever you have that you can pierce that metal seal with and just get it out of there. Alright, so let's wipe the paint off of the scissors. This is fairly thin bodied, which means that it is not as thin as water, but it is not as heavy as some other paints that you might be accustomed to using. I typically am going to use a palette knife to pull the color out of the bottle. All right, so here we go. So I'm just gonna put some of the pink down. Let's wipe this off. I'm gonna let these mix. So. Because these are permanent when dry, that means that you have the option to let them dry and apply layers of color together, or you can mix them like I'm going to do here. So this is one of our smooth and sturdy white, just it's a, a piece of um, cardstock. That's the word I couldn't get to. It's cardstock. This is our Raggedy Holes stencil. All I'm going to do is come through and just use a standard circular motion and apply the color through the openings of the stencil. Now, how much or how little, if you want to go really light, you can of course do that. If you want to go heavier, which is what I seem to have done just this second here with all of this purple, you can do that too. So I'm going to let this kind of blend and on the ink blending tool on the foam and I'm also going to let it blend as I start to overlap the pink area and now I'm going to just come in and really pick if I wanted these colors to stay true I would have used a different foam but for this kind of a purpose it's fine but you can see that this goes on and if I come back and I apply a second layer obviously the color will be stronger but if I hold this up to the light you can see all of the metal in there or the mica in there that creates that metallic look all right, so let's c cover these up. Oh, the thing I forgot to say, too, is that there's a colored dot on the top which will help you match the lid to the bottle. All right, so let's slide that out of the way, move raggedy holes, grab some water, and just clean this up. Now, actually, before I forget, so when you, you can thin these with water to make a wash. I mean, if I come back and I grab, well, we'll just turn this over and put this on the back. You can see that I can kind of float this color on there and the mica will do its thing. So there's always ways to play. That's, I think, the most interesting thing or the most important thing that comes out of any of these videos is ways to play. Okay, so foam stamps are next. This is our design. This is one of our recent releases that's called Leafy. I have two colors. Again, you can hear some of these. That one seems to have a mixing ball. This one does not, so you get what you get. I'm going to mix these up. I have turquoise and olive. This is the Ranger branded small brayer that is actually sold under the Dilutions Dina Wakely shared gel press stuff. It's the one with the pink brayer, and of course we all love pink, so why not, right? 
I'm going to put a little bit of both colors down. Now you'll find that your liner in the lid will stick. It just is what it is. That's the way this stuff goes some of the time. All right, that one didn't. So I'm going to put some of the olive down to begin with. And I'm not going to blend on the brayer so much as I'm going to allow the blending to kind of happen organically wherever I put the color on here. That's not enough. All right, that should be better. All right, so what I'm going to do is just brayer the excess olive off of here. Grab my palette knife, and now I'm going to put out some of the turquoise. Like any water-based paint, you're going to clean it up with water and this does not have an extender in it, so it's not going to stay moist forever. You obviously need to keep that in mind as you're playing around. So now what I'm going to do is bray off some of the turquoise, come back and pick up some of the green so that I can just kind of lay color in various places. All right, that looks good. So another piece of the cardstock. Again, this is just our smooth and sturdy white. Go ahead and press this. Now with foam stamps, I'm going to put this in a puddle of water off to the side. That would be what I would typically do. And I did not press hard enough to get coverage on the inside. But again, you can see all of that mica in there. So foam stamps, you don't want the paint to dry on the surface if I just do that and put it to one side. Anyway, coming back to this, you can see all of the mica in there. You can see that had I pressed in the center of the stamp, it would have printed properly. So up next, I'm going to show you precious metal color, how precious metal color looks when it's applied to Tyvek and heated, and then I'm going to use it on a gel press plate. Before I jump into the Tyvek, I do want to show you there was some paint left on my nonstick craft sheet covered surface here and some left on the brayer. So I just took another piece of the smooth and sturdy cardstock and I rolled what was left on the brayer and then picked up what was left on the table and just kind of rolled it on. So this makes really nice kind of very random grungy backgrounds also. All right, so Tyvek. I dislike cleaning brushes, so I'm going to opt for a palette knife to apply this. You could certainly apply it with a brush, but I can't see the sense in that, because then that means that I have to clean the brush after the fact. It's way easier to just wipe this off. So when you apply color to Tyvek, if you apply stripes or striations, you'll see some of that if you, if you don't apply so much heat that you cause the, the Tyvek to shrivel up to almost nothing. I mean, you can see that there are various sized bubbles on here, and there certainly is some patterning that remains visible. So this time I have pink and turquoise. I'm going to show you how I apply the paint to the Tyvek, and then I have a piece that's already got some color on it that's dry. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and give these a little bit of a shake. All right, good enough. All right, so here's a case where that's stuck. Again, you just kind of have to pick it up and shove it back inside the lid. Okay. Really, there is no magic to this. This is just slam some color on the Tyvek. You can go for really heavy coverage. You can go lighter. It's entirely up to you. You're the artist. You get to choose exactly what it is that you want to do. Now, i am obviously got some blending going on here, but I'm not worried about any funkiness happening because these two colors together are not going to make mud. So, again, we'll just come... This is all I do. I mean, you don't need to see me cover this whole piece because really why would we waste time on that, which is just plain old boring. Alright, so let's slide that to a place where it can finish drying and bring in the other. Alright, so this is baking parchment. It's what I use when I work with Tyvek, if you have some other form of a nonstick pressing sheet, you can do that too. But I like this because it's inexpensive, it's handy, I always have baking parchment around. So this is the piece that I've previously done, and it's olive, and I believe this is olive and turquoise. Now the way that this works is that 
the bubbles will form and push away from the heat source. So since I want bubbles, I want convex bubbles on top, I'm going to put this face down. Now you can see that there's some color that's come through here, but the most of the metallic is going to show here. So this is an old iron that I have cranked as hot as it will go. It's up on beyond the linen setting, in fact. And I don't know if you saw the Tybic video, but we do have one. You can certainly come to our YouTube ch channel or our blog and you can find it there. You'll get much more in-depth information about working with Tybec. So the thing about Tybec is, is it's made from plastic and is incredibly heat sensitive. I'm not actually pressing the iron on this piece or on top of the parchment paper so much as I am hovering and letting the Tyvek react. Now unfortunately the iron kind of gets in the way so it's a little hard to see. The other reason that I don't press real hard is because if you apply too much pressure, the bubbles will end up mostly flat, and I'm looking for dimension. Alright, so let's just take a look at this. So you can see I've got some pretty big bubbles going on there. Now what I'm going to do is grab a pair of scissors, I'm going to cut this in half, and then I'm going to apply some more heat. Let's apply some more heat to this one and see what happens. Alright, so again face down because I want the bubbles to be convex on the painted side and now I'm going to really, I'm not again not going with a ton of pressure but I am really going to let the heat kind of distress the Tyvek and there will be a lot of smaller bubbles that will form you're going to see significant shrinkage and you're also going to see that the metallic is going to kind of gather in the areas where this shrinks the most so it, this is cool enough, now this is obviously it's stuck a little bit to the parchment but that doesn't fit that's the whole point of the parchment. It pretty much pops off. So when you look at this, you can see that the color really, the mica really accumulates in those areas where there is this almost webbing that gets formed. I love this, this single bubble that sits among all of this webbing. This provides you with so much creative ammunition. There are so many different things that you can do with this. Um, so for example, again, going back to the Tyvek video, if you watched it, you might remember this piece. Now this piece, all the bottom is Tyvek with a few other bits thrown in and the top was just some molding paste that I put through a stencil. But this is how you can, one of the ways that you can use pieces of Tyvek, you can also put them on journal pages or other kinds of mixed media projects. All right, so with that said, next I'm gonna shut this iron off and get it out of the way. And then the last thing, I'm going to show you today is precious metal color on a gel press plate. Right, this side is actually clean-ish, mostly, close enough. So two colors again because why not, right? So I'm going to use, let's use the purple, or the violet, and the turquoise. Actually, you know what, let's use purple and green because really, why not? They're nice complementary colors which means that they're going to provide lots of oomph in terms of contrast. So what I'm going to do is, because purple and green will make mud, I'm going to just roll these out and I'm going to let a little bit of an ombre happen kind of in the middle. And I'm going to work on that same piece of smooth and sturdy collage paper, um, I'm sorry, cardstock. Uh, where is my brayer? All right, here's my brayer. So what I'm going to do is roll this out. Now I'm going to grayer off the purple so that I don't mix it into the pink. I'm sorry, I don't mix it into the green. I'm just going to kind of let that ombre happen a little bit. Alright, so in comes a stencil, in this case a mask. This is named Irregular Grid. So I'm going to grab a piece of paper. This is the simplest way that I work with a gel press plate, which is to put color on the plate, apply a stencil, pick up the color through the openings of the stencil or mask, depending on which one you happen to have, and then print what remains. Now, had I printed this on something else, this would have been pretty cool in and of itself. I just didn't get to it. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's bring in the cardstock, and let's do it that way. Press this and pull it back. 
And how awesome is that? Again, a really cool background. Had I done something like that on this, it also would have been cool, but you can certainly see the pattern much better on a, a solid background like this. So remembering that anything you can do with paint, you can do with precious metal colors. Take advantage of the 50% off discount and get creating.